Good morning, everyone. So glad that you're here today. This, this meeting today is the most important meeting of your whole week. We're coming together as believers. And if we don't watch it, this could become extinct in this world. The Bible said in the last days, sin would be rampant and the love of many would grow cold. The Bible says in the last days, there will be a great falling away. And, and, and truth is, we as believers are the hope for this whole world. No one has an answer for depression, anxiety, fear, cycles of destruction, heartbreak. But God's the answer. He's the one that gives salvation, eternal life, new beginnings, hope where it is actually hopeless. And you might walk in this place and say, my situation is literally hopeless. The doctors told me or I just can't see a light at the end of this tunnel. I don't see nothing. Well, that's where God comes in. He's able to do the impossible. There's a scripture that Jesus says this. He goes, what's impossible for man is possible with me. It's impossible for you. But not with a God that created the heavens and the earth from absolutely nothing. You must understand who you're, who you're worshiping today. There was nothing. And he says, let there be light. And there was light. Sun, moon, stars came into being by just a word. That's who you serve. And you're thinking, man, it's impossible. Guess what's okay? You're at the end of your rope. Come to me. Let me help you with that. And maybe today could be the beginning of your, come on, your new life, your new start, your new beginning, your restoration. Today could be your day of freedom. Today could be your day of salvation, new beginnings. Today could be that day. Just one word. One word will change your life. Thank you for coming today and thank you for making that sacrifice on Sunday morning. You got 168 hours a week. It's so wise to at least take a couple of those hours and spend it hearing from God and hanging around some believers. Because you are a byproduct of your, the people you hang around with. And, and right now there's just so much like evil in this world, division and fighting and arguing and violence and fear. We need each other and we need to come together at least once a week and worship together and get fed and bless each other. How many believe that your kids need it? You need it. Expose yourself to God. I'm very proud of you. I don't think it's a good idea. I think you, this is a must that we're in the house of God. Make it a, like, it's a must. Every week we go. I don't care how we feel. We get a flat tire, we fix it. If we have to catch the bus, like, like Christy said, we'll catch the bus. But we're going to be in the house of God. We can't afford, we're not going to negotiate our fellowship, our worship out of our schedule. God's going to be here. We're going to be here. And we're going to be here with our family. That's, that's the one thing that's a, a staple in our lives is God, right? So proud of you that you're here. Everyone from the front, from the front, to the back, to online. To Arizona, to Compton, to Kenya, to Oregon, to Arrowhead, to I don't know where. We're all over the place now. So glad to see you. We're going to start a new series, and it's, it's kind of like moving in from this last series. But the title of this series that we're going to be talking about for the next four weeks is Love Works. Say with me. Say with me. Love Works. So this month is going to be Love Month. And we're going to grow in love. Uh, Annalisa, come up. She's my daughter. And, and let's give her a hand. She's doing, she's growing so much. You know, proud of her. How many see the growth in my daughter, Annalisa? She's growing. And, and God, God is speaking to her all the time. And, and as she's made her life available more to God than ever, God is saying, I've been waiting for this time to speak to you. I want to use you. And she has so many talents and gifts that God right now is birthing out in her. We're seeing. She's developing. And one of the gifts that God gives her is just she gets prophetic words and dreams. And, and this morning I woke up. I was, it was 3 o'clock in the morning we met. 2.30, yeah. 2 o'clock, yeah, 2 o'clock, we met, I was walking, running out the door, and, and she, she somehow 
found me. Uh, she woke up at the same time. She goes, Dad, I want to share something with you. And she started sharing. And, but I wanted her to share what she saw. She said, I, got a, I had a dream and a vision all night long, but I want to share with the church. What would you see, Mama? Okay. Sorry, I got a whole bunch last night, so I was trying to figure <laughs> out which one. Um, but I got a dream all last night, and it was just for hours. Like, it was the same dream. Um, and in my dream... Um, God was preparing each ministry and it was like he was gathering the harvest and putting the harvest in this area and that area and preparing the harvest. And so um, I just remember seeing like the worship team and God was intricately like preparing the worship team, intricately preparing the greeter team, the altar team, every single team um, in our church to be sent out and to go bring in that harvest. Um, and in this preparation, God was just saying, like, this is our time, church, right now to prepare so we can walk in a greater level of God's authority and his power. And so that's just the season that we're in right now is preparation. How many are ready to get prepared? I and mean, we're going to prepare for a harvest. No harvest without preparation. I want a harvest. Are you prepared for one? Have you planted seeds? Are you ready? And when God's getting us ready for something... There's uprooting of like, oh my gosh, I hurt when you took out that weed. I know we need to get that weed out of your life. Some of you guys, literally, you got to stop smoking that weed. All right. I want to be used of God. You got the wrong harvest. I mean, you need some, come on, Jesus harvest, right? I believe that God's ready. I, 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 we don't believe that our church will ever be extinct. I believe our church is ready for revival. And churches like ours in the world are going to see the greatest harvest we've ever seen. I want to believe that. On, on, on fire, sold out believers that are allowing God to mold you and shape you and prepare you. When we come here, we're learning. Someone say learning. And that means that we're changing the way we're thinking, bad ideas for good ideas, wrong thinking for right thinking. All these, this is happening now in this time. And today we want to talk, I'm going to pray, and then we're going to talk about love. And I'm just really two major points that we're going to make today. And it, the point number one is that love, love never fails. And point number two is going to be this, love is always powerful. And if you want to walk in great power, you're going to have to learn how to walk in great love. And, and the devil knows this, and there is a real devil. He knows this, that if he could conquer your love, he, he conquers your power. A loveless Christian is a powerless Christian. The only way that someone knows that we're believers is by our love. Why? Because God is love. How can you say that God lives in you and you're, you're a hater and you're bitter and you're flipping everybody off and you're cussing. I mean, there's no one's going to see God. And then you're wondering why people are like, why don't you come to church with me? You go, you crazy. You're more crazy than I am. No, please. Are you, do you belong to a cult? What's up? Right? And they need to see one thing. They'll, they'll be listening. People want to hear what you have to say, but they need to know this first, that you love them. And if they see the love then they could see your God. And then you can introduce them to your God, okay? So we're gonna pray. Father, we just thank you for this wonderful day you've given us. Help us to understand your word. Open our eyes. Open our hearts to see it. Like, I see it now. I never saw it. There it is. You could only do that. Save those that need to be saved today, that they will know one thing. All you wanna do is love them, forgive them, give them a life they've been looking for, Love is knocking on every part, everyone's heart's door today. And I pray that we'll open up and let love in, which is God. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Love always works. Say it with me, love works. The word works, it means it's productive, it's advantageous, it's profitable, it's rewarding, it's effective. God Love is always rewarding, it's always effective, it's always profitable, it's always advantageous, and it's always productive. Anytime that you're practicing loving people, even your enemies, it's not in vain, it's going to work on their hearts. When we go to the toughest cities, areas, and cities uh, in, in this nation, and we're, we're going to Compton, and we're in Compton, some of our team is out there today, we go to, usually to the toughest neighborhood we could find 
in Compton. And we're going to go in there, and this is the first thing that we do. We find what the needs are, and we do everything we can to meet those needs in a practical way. We're loving them. People are hungry. We feed them. This week, our Adopt-A-Block team in Compton went to Compton, and they, they actually knocked on doors of a motel in the hood. When they knocked on the door of a motel in the hood, they found a family, nine, a family of nine living in a motel room. We, 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 they're hungry, they're hurting, they don't, they don't know what to do next. We partner up with them and we make sure we help them in that transition, give them food, make sure they have a place to stay. That's love in action. Now, that love works here in, here in San Bernardino and it works in, in India and it works in Africa. It works in your family and it works in Compton. It just works. What they say is, thank you so much. We we're so scared. We're so distressed. We're overwhelmed. You were God sent. And they'll even say this, thank God you came. And God wants you to be a blessing everywhere you go. And you could be the biggest blessing and you could be the most productive and you could be the most effective if not only you have the message of God, but you have the spirit of God. And when you're walking in the spirit of God, you're walking in love. This should be the most loving place in the world a place that we're worshiping a God that is loved. This is a place that the hurting and broken could come and be safe and loved. Who loves them? We love them. Is that right? First point, love never fails. God's love comes with a fail-proof guarantee. I don't know anything in this world that comes with a fail-proof guarantee. I've learned this. Manipulation will fail you. Your anger and revenge will fail you. Our economy will fail us. Our leaders will fail us. Our own strength and ability will fail us. And our health will fail us. I just found that out this weekend. I went, I went over there with all the teenagers and everybody and played softball all yesterday. I haven't played for 10 years, acting like I've been playing for years. I, I, I'm trying to do my best not to walk funny right now, but I am sore. That first time, my, my body was failing me out there. I remember when I used to be able to play all day, run as fast as I can. Even when I was running, I said, are you really running? Or are you just walking fast? What's going on here? I go, I don't know. Your body will fail you one day or the other. And as you get older, you realize that you don't run. Even when you're running, you're actually just walking. Why? Because we get older. That's just the way it is. But there's one thing that won't fail, fail you, and make sure you have your faith in here. God's love will never fail you. God's love always works. Now let's define what love is. This word love that's used in the scripture, love never fails, is a Greek word, agape. Say it with me, agape. It's describing the love of God. Like our love will fail. Maybe the, the person that you want to love you, they might, their love might fail or, or leave you, but not God's love. Agape love never fails. Now, agape love is this, seeking the highest good for others. The first part of agape love is that you're always, if you're walking in God's love, and this will never fail, everywhere you go, you're seeking the highest good for the people that are around you. Even if they're enemies, even if they're mean, even if they don't deserve it, don't let anyone change your mission. Always be loving. Seek the highest good for every single person you come into contact with. And God says, if you take that attitude, you will not be a doormat. You'll be powerful. You'll be victorious. And everything you do will be profitable. The word agape also means acts of kindness. It's describing a love that's a verb. I just can't say I love you. It's actually acts of charity. If you're hungry, I feed you. If you're naked, I clothe you. If there's someone at the Motel 6 with their family or whatever motel they're at and, and they need groceries, we go and buy them groceries. Love is a verb. As we're given our tithes and offerings, we're practicing love. This is the only way as a church that we could go out and meet greater needs. Every one of us practice generosity and love. God, you've been so good to me. Let me pass on the favor to somebody else. How many recognize that? It also means generosity. Love is generous. Generosity means 
having a willingness to give without smallness of thinking. That means when you're giving, you're not giving the least you could give. You're giving the most you could give. But it's not just giving without smallness. It's giving without meanness. You could help someone and be really mean. Here's your bag of groceries. Get out of here. Why don't you have a job? You know, there's no need for the extra verbiage. Give them the groceries. Let them know we love you and do it with a smile. Don't try to put people down when you're trying to help them. Don't be mean. Right? That means we do good works with the right attitude. God's not just concerned about you doing right. He says, I want you to do right, but I want you to do it with the right spirit too. And if you do right without the wrong, with, with the wrong spirit or you're mean or you're hurting people while you're doing it, this is what God's saying. All that good works that you think you're doing, don't count. It's not powerful. And I guarantee you this, it will not be productive. Well, I told him the truth. Stop being a, a truth teller with no love. Stop using the gift of prophecy to destroy people. Well, I'm a prophet. I know, but be a prophet that builds people, encourages people, that people want to. So, well, do I got to tell them the truth? Of course you tell them the truth, but you tell them in an encouraging way. Build people up. Give them hope. After they're done with you, they shouldn't feel like, oh, my gosh, God's going to punish me. Let them know. Yeah, of course. You could even say that, you know. Understand you keep going the way you're going, you're going to ruin your life. But I got some good news for you. I used to be there. And God got me out of that whole cycle of abuse and destruction and addiction. And what he did for me, he could do for you. It's, you could say it and say it in a loving way. Amen? Uh, it, it means give with an abundance mentality. Do the most you can, not the least you can. Do the most you can. So love never fails. That word never means not ever. At no time, in no place, absolutely never fail. The word fail means, it's a Greek word, it kept, it's ek peep to. Say it with me, ek peep to. That's crazy. But love never ek peep toes. You know what it means? It's never powerless. It'll never fall to the ground without effect. You'll never be a farmer that plants love and not get a harvest. It's going to be productive. You'll never lose. You'll never become efficient, inefficient, deficient of la or lacking. Or it means to fall short of success or achievement in something expected or attempted or desired. Love always works. This last week, Lisa had a, uh, had a leak in her tire. And it shows up on her dash that you're minus, I think it was minus 10 or something like that. You need to put air in that back tire. The last time that that light came on, it was minus 5, went to minus 20, went to minus 30, went to minus 40 until she got a flat. And she drove on that flat tire, and as she was driving on that flat tire, it, it ruined the tire because the sidewall just ended up getting a crease. So when we tried to put air in it, it stayed in it, but when we went to the tire shop, she said, your tire's ruined because you drove on the flat tire and I told Lisa, next time that light comes on, let's not ignore it. Let's put some air in it so we don't have to pay $400 for a new tire. We're going to patch it. Now we have to buy a new tire. So we just had that conversation. It wasn't a long conversation, but she remembered it. Now I had, like, we're minus 5, minus 10. And she goes, it's minus. I go, relax. She goes, no, we got to put air in this tire. She just kept going, going okay, let's go put air in the tire. We ended up showing up to A and PM, and you know, putting air in an A and PM is a, it's just like hard, because those things barely work. Like like the air that comes out of them is a little bit more than my own breath. Like, <laughs> like they're they're made like to blow balloons up maybe, but not a tire. And they have graffiti all on them. It's just a mess. Half of them don't work, and if you had to put change in them, that don't work either. Well, I stop at the A and PM. I pull the car up, and as I pull the car up, I go, I check the air holes, and it's working. I go, what? The Lord is with us. It's going, shh, yeah. 
Well, when I did that, a girl comes out and she just guns loaded. Pow, 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 I'm just, I mean, just bazooka in me right there. And she goes, that's my air. I went to the front and I got that air put on. What you doing with my air? Now, your first response is your natural response. And you want to just say, well, here's your air. That's your first, you got to make sure that you don't go with your first response because your first response is always the flesh. The second response is the spirit. Hold on, relax. Get your composure. Or I could have just said, well, after I'm done, you could get your air. Right? But I didn't do that. God told me, put air in your tire. That's love. Put air in your tire. I go, which tire? This is my response. What tire do you need air in with a smile? <laughs> and she goes, my, my front tire. I go, okay. So I went around and I put air in. I, this was hard. I used all my strength. Because that thing, I don't think, I, that air thing don't worry. It was like, <laughs> it looked like it wasn't even working. But it, it started working. And this is what she said five times. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Her friend came out that was with her in the car she goes, thank you, thank you, thank you. Why are they saying I'm sorry? Because I didn't respond with, she, with what she dished out. I didn't reflect her attitude. I reflected the love of God, and it convicted her. How is this guy being so nice to me when I was so mean to him? You'll never reach people if you keep reflecting their bad attitudes. They'll never see Jesus because all they see is you. There has to be a time in your life that love is your highest goal and that you choose to love. And when you choose to love, this is what God is saying, that will always work. I'm going to show you a video here. And I think it's, we need to like look at this video and see what our attitude would be. This video is at a, at a supermarket and this man and, and husband and wife team are asking people for a drink of water or some food as the people are coming out. And some of the responses are really negative and some of the po responses are positive. But this is what I want you to under see in this video. If you respond lovingly, in this video, there's a monetary reward. But God is saying when you respond po positively, I want you to, with love, there's always gonna be reward in your emotions, in your life, anytime God's giving you an opportunity to love someone, he's not only allowing you to be a blessing to someone, he's trying to get a blessing to you. Actually, when you pass the love test, you, re, you graduate into next level living, next level blessing, next level prosperity, next level harvest. God's getting you somewhere, but he wants to make sure your spirit is right. Take a look at this video. At it again, we're gonna give back. We're gonna ask people for food from their shopping cart. We're gonna pay for their entire shopping cart. Let's see who gives me food. Excuse me, miss. Can I have something to eat? Yeah, there's plenty of places to go get something to eat. As a huh? matter of fact, there's a whole market you can go get something to eat. No, I'm talking. I'm talking about from your shopping cart. Can I have something to eat? Why would I give you something from my shopping cart? Get your own shopping cart and get something. But to I'm eat. hungry. Well, so am I. I don't really have money. Yeah, well, neither do I. I don't have a job. Neither do I. Sorry to bug you. I'm a little hungry. Can I have something to eat? I don't have any money. Oh, no, money. Not, not money. I'm yeah. talking about, like, maybe I could get something from your grocery. Can I have one of these bags of chips? Huh? Oh, that would be lovely. Just something to feed, feed my don't stomach. Don't give him anything. Then more people will come here He's hungry. I can give him some so chips. What? Will, will you give me this to eat? Yeah. Yeah? yeah? Oh, that's nice. Why do why you want to give this to me? Because you're hungry. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. Uh, so this, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to give this back to you. How much did this cost you? Well, I think it was about 80 bucks. Here you go. So I'm doing a social experiment right now. Whoever gives me food right now, I'm paying for their whole entire groceries for being generous and giving me something to eat. Well, thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank Appreciate you that. Okay. What was your name? Jack. Nice to meet you, Jack. Thank you for being so nice. Okay. You didn't 
say that. You said you were broke and look at all the money you have. Well, yeah, I'm doing actually a social experiment. So whoever gives me food, I'm paying for their entire groceries. Well, but you didn't give me gross. anything. Well, we'll give you something now. No, it's too you late. Want a banana no. or some No, I don't want anything because I asked you first, but you didn't offer it. Can I have something to eat? No. Anything? Excuse me? Can I have something to eat? Okay. Sorry. It's okay. Can I have something to eat? No? Excuse me? Can I have something to drink? Huh? Can I have something to drink? I'm um, sorry, I don't have any more money and I only have... No? No, sorry. It's okay. Can I have something to eat? Yeah, of course. I mean, what can I give you? Anything. It's whatever you want to give me, it's okay. Do you want some chips? Sure. Thank you, ma'am. You're so kind. I have no money. I just literally oh. spent my last money. But no, I appreciate it. You're going to give this to me. You're so cute. How much was everything? I don't know why. Because I want to pay for it. No. It's kind of you. No, I don't want this. I just want to pay for your groceries. No, 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 no. Yes, you please. No, 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 no. It's okay. Please let me. a social experiment. We since you're being so it. nice, so many people are saying no. And since you helped out, we're going to pay your entire groceries no, no, right no, no, now. Yes. How much was your grocery? No, no, no. Seriously. Seriously, I don't care. How much is your grocery? I, I don't know. I mean, it wasn't very much. Oh my god, I'm like shocked. Like $25 okay. is not okay. much. Are you sure? Yes. What is your Give it 40. Maybe there I you go. Work with you guys. Yeah. We're just giving back whoever's generous. Why? Today. I mean, whoever. I do that. I'm gonna tell you something. This is so weird because like I'm not even working right now, but like at Christmas time I always like I'll buy somebody's groceries for them. So it's so no 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 I don't want any more. No. Well, every no, time no, you say please. something good, I'm gonna pay you. No. No seriously. No, we thank you. No, I don't. It's nice. I want you to take it. I want you to take it. God sent me. This is to pain. Are you serious? Just yes. Yeah. So oh carry on. What were you talking about? No 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 no. <laughs> what were you saying? No no no. I feel horrible. Taking no seriously. What no, were you no, saying? No, I'm very interested in your story. It's just that it's weird because I always do that for people when I can't. You do that? So, wow, so that's so nice. No more. Seriously. No. Stop that. Take it. No thank you. No we appreciate more. people like you. We appreciate it's it. It's very you nice. A back. lot of people told me no. No. You no. can take it. Thank you very much. You don't even know. Look at it again. We're going to give back. We're going to ask people for food from their shopping. Do you see, do you see the correlation that God wants to bless you? And I believe the cast register of heaven, the blessing register of heaven, as soon as we start being kind and loving... It's just ching, ka ching, ka ching. Release a blessing, release a blessing, release a blessing, release wisdom, release revelation, release breakthrough, release power. Don't let anyone ever conquer your love. Love. Love practically. Help people. Say yes. Serve, sacrifice so someone else can get ahead. And God is saying, if you have that attitude, you'll always be ahead. Come on, give God some praise that every time God's sending your need, he's not trying to take something from you. He's trying to get something to you. So love, no matter where you practice it, never fails. I remember when we first started this church, there were people that were saying, well, you know, while you're feeding them, there's some people right there just taking advantage of you. Go, they can't take advantage of me. I'm loving them by choice. If they want to lie to me and cheat, that's on them. I'm going to still be blessed because my heart is right. I'm doing it because I love them. How many understand when you do it with the right motive, you get the blessing no matter what? Second very important point is love is always powerful. When I say powerful, this is what it means. It's strength power for performing miracles. When God talks about his power, it's a, it's a Greek word, dynamis, and it means strength to do miracles. God doesn't want Christians to just be natural. He wants Christians to be supernatural. That power for miracles works through the love in you. The word power also means moral power. It means the power to live a righteous life. It means power to influence. If I ever want to reach someone for Christ, lead someone to Christ, then they have to want to follow me. 
they have to be convinced of one thing, that I love them. And when people know I love them, then I could influence them. The other day I was at a gas station and there was a young man, maybe 21 years old, and I'm putting gas. I have a lot of testimonies at gas stations, I guess. <laughs> he comes up to me. He's homeless. I could see that. And, and I know, man, I would love to get him a men's home and get him off the streets. But it, I was in Arizona, but I was willing to do whatever it take, took anyways. He said, can I have some food? I go, look, I'm going to go inside the store. You could buy whatever you want. And then, and then we're, you know, we're good. See, when he, 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 didn't, he didn't get one thing. He just got a whole bunch of stuff. And that was okay. It doesn't matter. The guy's hungry. Get what you want. Get what you want. Just get what you want. So he, he got what he wanted, and, and that was cool. I left. And as I'm leaving, I told him, I go, bro, what's your name? And he gave me his name. I go, you know, you don't have to be out here. I gave him a card. I go, look, we have a men's home. If you want to get off the streets, I'll get you in our men's home right away. Here's my card. I'm going right now to Arizona this way, but I live in California. But here's, here's a card. He goes, thank you so much. And he put the card away. I don't know if that young man is going to end up in our home, but there's one message that he got is that God loves him. He's not forgot about him, and there's a way out. How many understand that? It only happens through love. Love is always powerful. Say it with me. Love is always powerful. Look at Ephesians 3.19. It says, may you experience the love of Christ. This is a prayer Paul is making, and he, he's praying over the Ephesian church. He goes, I pray that you'll experience I'm praying for this. And I pray for every one of us, including me. I pray that we'll experience the love of Christ. The love that you're looking for is the love of Christ. You can't find it in a human relationship. You can't find it in things. You can't find it in your money. You can't find it in your car. I love my car. That's not going to be good enough. God wants to give you his love, the love of Christ. Though it is too great to fully understand that what he's saying is this love is without limits. You can never tap into the fullness of this love. You think God loves you right now. You don't know what he's saying. You think he loves you. You don't even know how much he loves you. But I pray that you begin to understand how much God loves you. When you know how much God loves you, it makes you confident. I'm okay. You love your kids. God says, I love you way more than you love your kids. But look what he says here. Then, say with me, then you will experience, then you will be made complete. And with all the fullness of life and power that comes from God. See the correlation here is that love comes with the fullness of power that comes from God. Now, where does, where does power come from? Where does power come from? Where does power come from? How do you get it? Through love. You want to be a powerful believer? Be full of God's love. And the more you love God and the more you love people, and the more God's love flows through you, through your family, to your friends, to your church brothers and sisters, to those in the community, this is what God, God is saying. You're going to start experiencing full power. The church should be known for its power and love. Power and love come together. And I'll tell you why power and love come together. Because God is love and he is powerful. So when you walk in love, you get the power. You cannot separate love and power. Does anybody want some power? Now this word power manifests in four different ways. I Say it with me. Love, God, God's love manifests in four different ways. Number one, this is how it manifests. How am I powerful? Miracle power. Power to produce miracles such as healing, deliverance. Deliverance, what's deliverance? Helping people get set free from demons. I was here Wednesday night, Wednesday before last, and I was here probably for an hour and a half, two hours. Praying for a young lady that was demonized with depression, hopelessness, suicidal spirits, generational curses. And I was praying for her for almost two hours. And this is what we're doing. We were removing, casting out demons 
through the power of God. Now, why would you spend two hours praying for someone? The reason I spent two hours praying for them is because God loves them and I love them. Come on. How many believe God is powerful? She's right there, matter of fact. She's so awesome. I saw her yesterday at the softball game, and I looked at her and go, man, your face even looks different. She goes, I know. I am free. I got joy, and it's affecting my whole family. I even saw her daughter. I go, she, man, she even looks like God's doing something with her. It's overflowing into her daughter. How many believe that God wants to use you in a mighty way to love people, and when you love them, expect miracles? I believe it, that God wants to do miracles. God wants to heal those who have HIV, hepatitis, cancer, pain, etc. We need the supernatural power of God. How, and if we have that, this is going to be a center of healing. As a matter of fact, you're going to be a distribution center of God's miraculous power. Love, love some people. Second manifestation of love is, is moral power. The more, of, more love that you have in you, the more ability you have to live a righteous and holy life. Maybe you don't have a sin problem, you have a love problem. You don't know how much God loves you. And the other thing is, you're not allowing God's love to flow through you. When God's love shows up, he not only loves you, he transforms you. And gives you the power to be set free from addiction, from the power of sin, and helps you overcome. There's a story in the Bible with the, with the, the adulterous woman in John 8.10. It says she was an adulterous woman. She was caught in the very act of adultery. And we covered this a little bit last Wednesday. She was covered in, she, she, she was in adultery. She was caught in adultery. And back in those days, the religious leaders want, were like the judges. And they would come... They found her in adultery, and the sentence was death. These guys were not full of love. They were full of judgment. They didn't love her. What they wanted to do was kill her. They dragged her out in public around a whole crowd. Each one of them had a, a rock, a stone, to stone her to death in front of everybody. All the village and all the surrounding areas were saying, what's happening? And they said, we found so-and-so committing adultery. They caught her red-handed. We got her. The priests are going to kill her. So they bring her to Jesus, and then Jesus starts writing in the dirt. I don't know what he's writing, but maybe he was writing their sins. And then he says, puts his head up, he says, he without sin casts the first stone. And they all drop their stones. But this is so powerful. This is what Jesus said. And they left, and Jesus stood up again and said to the woman, where are your accusers? Didn't even one of them condemn me? Condemn you? She said, no, Lord. She said, and Jesus says, neither do I. Go and sin no more. Say with me, moral power. That means that God gave her the ability to, he healed her of her pain. But most of the sins that we do is self-medication. You know it's wrong, but you're in pain. And what you do is you go to something that gives you temporary happiness, but you do it and you become more miserable. And you become more trapped. She was trapped in a cycle thinking, if I sleep with that man that's married and I'm married, that will solve my emptiness and give me some worth. But the truth was she was stuck. Jesus not only forgave her, but he set her free from her cycle and gave her an ability to live a righteous life, live a moral life, and overcome her sin and her pain. Isn't that great? So I'll say moral power. The last two is influential power. The supernatural power and the capacity to be a compelling force on people's beliefs, actions, and behavior. First, love and compassion, then influential power to make disciples and bring in the harvest. Let's not go out there trying to reach people without loving them first. When we first started this church, no one knew about the Way World Hours because it didn't exist. We barely got a name, but we got a name with no church, no building. We weren't going door to door and say, hey, I want to introduce you to us. We are the Way World Outreach. Wouldn't you like to be part of a great organization like that? 
No, we didn't push an organization. This is what we did. We knocked on doors trying to find some people to love. And as we found people that were hungry and they needed groceries, we just go to a grocery store and buy them groceries. If there was a, a couple on, that were living on the streets and, and, and they needed just a, a, a little help, we get them a motel and they stay there and they could take a shower and then we bridge them to the next level of help. If they're practical and we still do it today every single day, and this is how we love the community. And as we love them, we became influential. And I remember the community started asking us, where's your church? And we were th uh, three months knocking on doors, meeting needs, feeding the hungry with no church building. But everyone started asking us, where's your church? And I started asking them, if we had one, would you come? And there wasn't a person that said, we won't come. They all said they would come. Because once they knew we loved them, we could now influence them, lead them, change their behavior, change their mindsets, and then give them what we wanted to give them, which was eternal life and faith in Jesus Christ, salvation for eternity. That first service, we had 500 people from the hood that came to church, and many of them came for the first time, and they didn't come because they didn't come just because they wanted to come to church. They came because they knew we loved them, and we gave them a message by meeting their needs, and then we had influence over them to introduce them to Jesus. 400 of them gave their life to Jesus on the first day of this church. We made disciples. Look what the scripture says right here. Move with compassion. Say it with me. Move with compassion. That's Jesus. Move with compassion, with love. Jesus touched their eyes. They're blind men. And immediately they regained their sight and followed him as his disciples. So first love, then influence. Then they followed him. You'll never have a disciple for Jesus Christ if they don't know you even love them. They'll never give you permission to lead them until they know that you care for them and you have the best interest for them. Are we ready to reach our communities? Are we ready to reach our hard-headed family members? They just need a little more love. Don't let them overcome you with their anger and their meanness. You overcome them with your love. Amen. And the last thing is multiplication power. Say it with me, multiplication power. It's supernatural growth and resources. Multiplication is growing beyond reason. Ability, natural resources, beyond our imaginations and even our prayers. And this is the formula. First love and compassion, then supernatural growth and multiplication. Many of you have big dreams and you need supernatural help. It's not going to happen because you don't have enough time. You don't have enough resources. You're not, you don't have enough ability. Um, you don't have enough education. But just because you don't have enough doesn't mean that God can't meet you and make himself the, um, be the more than enough God in your life and take the little you have and multiply it. How many believe in the multiplication power of the Lord? I really believe this church is going to multiply. How many believe that? All over the United States and the world, it's going to start happening. Get ready for supernatural growth in our lives, in our church, in our families. God is saying, I'm ready to accelerate your, come on, I'm ready to accelerate your ministry, accelerate your efforts, that you're going to work as, as hard as you can, but the results you're going to get are going to be on what you put in. We're talking about supernatural multiplication. Let's look at this last story. In Matthew 15, 32, then Jesus called his disciples to him and said, I feel compassion for the crowd. Do you see the love again? The, the blind men, I feel compassion for the blind men. I feel compassion for the crowd. Because they have been with me now for three days and have nothing left to eat. And I don't want to send them away hungry. You know what's so awesome about this? God doesn't want you to send you away today in your need. He wants to meet you now. I just pray you let him. That's impossible with God. God says, I want to help you. Will you let God help you? You know what's so cool about this is that he sees your need. He sees your pain. He sees your broken heart. He sees the loss. He sees the failures. And you think, man, I could ever bounce back from this. And God says, of course you can. Because I'm a God that raises the dead. And I see your need. But will you allow me to produce my supernatural provision and multiplication on your life? Could this be the year that you grow 
like you were here for 20 years? And people say, what happened to you? It's like, you're like a completely different person. I know, multiplication. How many believe that could happen? I remember having a, a, a meeting with a homeless man in our church, and, 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 and he was living behind a trash bin. And, and today, he's running a, a crew of electricians in San Diego, has his own home, making six figures. And well, how did that happen? Multiplication. All he knew was drugs and gang banging and fighting and depression. He was getting high with his mother when she was eight years old. God changed his life. He said, well, how could he grow that fast? Man, he's moving real fast. It's the love of God. It's the multiplication of God. And all, all God is saying, will you allow me to bless you? And will you allow me to be a blessing through you? And if you just love people, I'll do the multiplication. So first, compassion. Look at this. We're ending with this. Look. He says, um, I feel compassion for the crowd. They've been with me and they're hungry. Because they might, they, they might, because they might faint from exhaustion on the way home. So the disciples said to them, where are we going to get enough bread in, in this isolated place to feed such a loud crowd of thousands of people? And Jesus asked them, how many loaves of bread do you have? And what he's saying is, you guys don't know. I got the power of multiplication working with me. Because I'm loving those people. And when I love them, I, get, I tap into the resources of God. Are you, are you ready? Come on, God, look at this. And it says, and they said, and Jesus asked them, how many loaves? And they replied, we have seven and a few small fish. Seven loaves of bread and a few small fish. He directed the crowd to sit down on the ground. And he took the seven loaves and the fish. And when he had given thanks, he broke them and started giving them to the disciples. And the disciples... Gave them to the people. This is how it works. God says, I bless you, you bless them. I bless you, you bless them. I love you, you love them. I love you, you love them. But they don't deserve love. You don't deserve love and I still love you. They don't deserve love and you still love them. But they're mean. I know you're mean too. And I bless you and I love you. And then you love mean people too. But they're sinners. You, you, you were a sinner too. Don't, don't forget where you come from. You were nasty. Come on here. I loved you. And all that nastiness. You love them and their nastiness. Amen. Come on. I bless you. Go feed them. Go feed them. What I gave you. Feed them with what I gave you. Look what he says. And they all ate. Everybody. Thousands of people. Ate and were satisfied. And they gathered up seven full baskets of the broken pieces that were left over. And God is saying, you'll never outgive me. When you begin to walk in love, this is what it's going to do. It's going to tap into the supernatural power of God. When God gives you a vision, it's beyond your ability, it's beyond your talent, and it's beyond your bank account. But that's okay. It's beyond your education as well. And God says, that's okay. Just go out there with the right motive to love people. And I guarantee this, I will back you up with resources. I will back you up with miracles. You will be an influence in your city. And I'm going to give you the power to live a life that's moral, that's holy, that shines light, that they'll see me in every part of your life. How many are ready, come on, to be an influence in this dark world? Let's all stand up. We're going to dismiss in a second. Now, I want you to get this. Miracle power. How do I activate that? Just love people. Receive the love of Christ. Give the love of Christ. Your Christ the Christian is going to close this out. The first step to walk in the agape love or the love of God, the love of Christ, is to receive Christ. You can't walk in the love of Christ without receiving Christ. When you believe in him and accept him as your Lord and Savior... He'll forgive you of every one of your sins. And then it's what he's going to do. He's going to fill you with his Holy Spirit. And when he fills you with his Holy Spirit, he fills your heart with love. He's never going to ask you to do something he's not giving you first. Freely give what you've received. And all I'm asking you for today, you'll never be complete. You'll never live a moral life. You won't overcome. You'll always fail, 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 fail. Because the only thing that really works is love. And if you can receive the love of Christ today, your life can change. You can start living a life of purpose. And you can be really powerful. We started this church. I knew, I knew nothing about starting a church. But God told me just love some people. 
Like, well, I could do that. And you know what? You could do that. We could make a difference. And this love, this month, make it a love month. Go out of your way and love people. Love your church. Love your family. Let them see the love of Christ in you. They've been looking for it. And when they see that, God's going to give you the power of influence. They just want to see, is it really working? They say, it's working. Look how I'm loving you. Like, I should be punching you. But I'm loving you. Like, I know. What happened? I, I'm just telling you, man, it's the love of God. And I just decided to receive it and give it. So no matter what, I'm going to love you forever. I don't care how crazy you act because that's how God loves me. You guys ready to receive the love of Christ? Let's give a hand for Pastor Chris to close us out right now. I'm going to receive the word today. Awesome. Let's give a hand for Pastor Mark. I'm going to receive that word today, this morning. God is good. You know, just as Pastor Marco said, right now, what we need most is the love of Christ in our lives. And we can't give love unless we've been introduced to love. And there's all kinds of counterfeit loves out there, but the, the one true love is the love of Jesus Christ. And right now, right now in this moment, this may be the first time you're introduced to that love of God. Or maybe you're saying, I need to come back to my first love. Maybe you stepped away and you found yourself running from God's love. Well, God is so good because as far as you've gone and as deep into a dark place as you feel like you've gone, you're never too far for God's love. And in this moment right now, I believe God is introducing his love to you in a fresh way. He's saying, I love you, son. I love you, daughter. You know, the Bible makes it very clear about the condition that we're in. The Bible says that we've all sinned. We've all fallen short. How many know that that's true? We've all fallen short. The Bible also says that the wages or the price for our sin is death. That's death right now in our life. That's our joy begins to die, our purpose, our life. And that even leads over into eternity. The Bible says that we could, because of our sin, we pay this price of death. We could end up in hell forever. It's never a place that God intended for you to go. But it's a place we end up because of our own sin. So where's the hope? Well, God loves you so much, the Bible says, that while you were still sinning, in the middle of your darkest moment, he sent his son Jesus to die on your behalf, to pay the penalty for our sin. That means that every wrong that we've done was paid for by the blood of Jesus on the cross. He loves you that much that he was willing to say, I'll pay for it so that you don't have to. So how, how can I be saved? How can I, how can I know this love? Do I have to be a really good person? Do I have to go clean up my life? Do I have to kick my addiction? Do I have to just be a better Christian before I can be introduced to the love of God? No. The way we're introduced to God's love is by putting our faith in Jesus Christ. God doesn't expect you to change and come back to Him. He expects, and all He's saying is, come to me right here where you are. As a matter of fact, I'm not expecting you to even run to me. I'm coming straight to you, right where you are right now. And I'm introducing my love to you right now, right here. I believe today we're being introduced to the love of God. We can come to Him with our condition, with our pain, with our hurt, even with our sin, and lay it at the feet of Jesus. So how can I be saved? I just need to repent. Just turn away from your old life and turn to Christ today for the forgiveness of your sins, for a new start, to receive eternal life. Put your faith in Jesus today. And if that's you today, if you're saying, I want to put my faith in Jesus Christ, I want to make him the Lord of my life. I want to know that if I were to die today, I'd spend eternity in heaven forever. Why? Not because I'm a good enough person, but because I put my faith in Jesus, the one who is good enough for me, the one who has made me 
a brand new creation. If today you wanna put your faith in Jesus and come back to your first love, and today you're saying, that's me, then I want you, when I count to three, I want you to raise your hands all over this building if you're saying, that's me. If you're saying you need to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior today, from the front row all the way to the back row, you're saying, that's me. I don't want you to be timid or ashamed, but, but just raise your hand and say, I need the love of Jesus today. When I count to three, I want you to raise your hand all over this room. Are you ready, church? Are we ready? Let's get ready, church. Here we go. When I count to three, one, two, three. All over this room, you're saying that to me. I see you guys right here. I see you guys. Raise your hand. I see your hand right there. Anybody else, you're saying that to me. I want to receive Jesus. I see your hand. I'm proud of you. Anybody else, I want to receive Jesus today. I see your hand. I'm proud of you. Anybody else, I see your hand. I see your hand. I see your hand right over here. Anybody else, you're saying that's me. That's me. I see your hand. I see your hand over there. Anybody else? I see your hand back there in the back row. I see your hand. I see your hand back there. For all those that raise your hand this morning, we want to ask you to do one more bold step. Would you make your way out of your seat, even from the back row? Come on up from the back row. We want to pray with you today and congratulate you. And church, right now, we celebrate this moment. We clap. We cheer. We get excited. Come on, church. Let's give God praise for all those that are giving their life to Jesus today. If you raise your hand, come on up. We want to get excited. We want to pray with you today. Just ask somebody next to you. If you want to go up, I'm willing to go up there with you. Church, let's keep coming. They're still coming up. Let's get excited. This is exciting. They're still coming, church. God is so good. There's nothing more important. There's nothing more important that we can celebrate and get excited for than someone giving their life to Jesus Christ. Come on, isn't God good? Come on, let's clap for those that are still making their way forward right now. For everyone that just came up and for everyone that is coming up even right now, I just want you to look at me for a second. For those that just came up, just look at me for a second. We are not going to leave you hanging. We're going to help you. We were never meant to do this walk by ourselves. What we're gonna do, we're gonna help you to grow in your walk with God. Your next step is to get baptized. What's your next step? To get baptized. And also, we have a class where we're gonna show you and disciple you and train you on how to live out your Christian walk with God. No more are we doing things one foot, out, one foot in, one foot out. How many are ready to just live sold out for Jesus and to give it all for Him? We're going to show you how to walk that walk out. We want to sign you up for a class that's called Holy Warriors, where we're going to train, teach, and disciple you how to be a sold out Christian for God and to live this walk out. We're going to train you. We're going to walk you through it. And the person in front of you, they're going to pray with you, and they're going to help you to get signed up. We're going to need a, we're going to need a, quite a few more altar workers up here as well. Discipleship group leaders, leaders, altar workers, we need your help up here. There's a few more people that we need to make sure everybody has someone to pray with them. And don't forget, church, this Wednesday night, God has a word for our church this Wednesday night. We're right now in a series of one of the most controversial topics in our country. We're talking about uh, homosexuality. We're talking, even pretty soon, we're going to talk about on the topic of abortion. And these things are going to be tackled Wednesday nights. This house is packed out. And if you want to see what the Word of God says about these things, then be here and invite friends and family to be here Wednesday night. You're not going to want to miss it. Powerful things that God is doing right now. So let's do this. Yeah. Wow. God just got, gave pastor a word. He said, there's anyone right now, you need healing. You need healing in your body for HIV, hepatitis, cancer. Some of these things that maybe you've accepted, you're saying, 
I need healing and nothing else can work except the hand of God. I want you to come up, make your way up to this, to this altar right now. We're gonna pray and we're gonna believe that the power of healing, miracle power is flowing right now in this place. If you need healing, come on up right now. We're gonna pray. I see people coming up right now. We're gonna pray and believe it. In the name of Jesus, we're being healed. In Jesus' name. And Jesus, let's stretch our hands to everyone up here at the altar. Father, right now in the name of Jesus, we just pray for healing power. Can you lay your hands on these two right here? We pray for healing power in the name of Jesus. We bind up every single disease. We bind up now every single infirmity in the name of Jesus. And we come against, Father God, every single lie, the enemy that says we're going to live with this forever. We break, Father, every spirit of infirmity now in Jesus' name. And we release your love your love now miracle power flows now your word says by your stripes we are healed and we release we come against father those things in the name of jesus and we release we plead the blood of jesus over your sons and daughters right now from the top of our heads god from the top of their heads, God, to the soles of their feet. We release it now in the name of Jesus. We release it now. We receive it now. We receive it now in Jesus' name. Church, I want you to repeat after me. Say, God, I receive your love in my life. I come against every sickness and infirmity. I break it now in Jesus' name. I believe in you, Jesus, that you died on the cross and you rose from the dead so I can be saved. I put my faith in you, Jesus, as my Savior, as my Lord, as my healer, as my deliverer. Set me free. Give me a new start. Fill me now with your love and with your spirit. I make you the Lord of my life. And my life will never be the same because it belongs to you. In Jesus' name I pray, and we all say amen and amen. Can we give God praise, church? Right now, people are getting set free. People are getting delivered. People are receiving healing and receiving breakthrough. This is what this moment's all about. Church, we love you. If you need prayer, come on up. We'd love to pray with you. And another, one more time, again, if you're a young adult in the place, this Friday at 7 p.m., we have someone really a worldwide evangelist and speaker is going to be with us this friday at 7 p.m you don't want to miss it once in a lifetime opportunity to receive an impartation this friday don't miss it if you're a young adult let's be there and let's be there wednesday night for a word on the end times what god is doing right now so we love you church if you need prayer come on up and let's do this Let's go out there and let's love somebody. Let's take action of what we received today. We received the love of God today. We're on a mission now to love somebody this week. Let's do it. We love you, church. Remember, if God is for you, there is no one who can come against you. Remember, if you need prayer, coming up. We love to pray with you. God bless you, church.